Hello everybody, Grant the super overworked switcher here. Today I'm going to tell you the inevitable war that's been going on for the past few months. And no, it's not the Russian-Ukraine war, but a smaller scale war. This one being for supremacy, dominance, and, all ab and above all, efficiency. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? So the new Carver Northern Railroad, which is my railroad if you didn't know, shares its tracks with BNS, BNSF, CSX, and the Cadenville and the Cadenville Railroad. We have signed several contracts with the, with these railroads so we can so we can ship our supplies through them. But in April 2022, BNSF got got a um, sneaky idea. What was it? They brought out contracts on our territory, of course. And then later in June, they decided to and they decided to get some customers from the Cadenville, inadvertently sparking a war. So just like a budget version of the start of World War II, since the since the Cadenville was an ally for the for our railroad, um. You can get the idea of what happened. Throughout July of 2022, we we were rapidly shipping to supplies to the Cadenville so they can pass, so they can somehow get their customers back. The BNSF eventually got hold of the of this scheme. They started intercepting our loads. So you can so you can obviously see how we were mad. So you already know us, switches would be pretty tired out by the situation. By the time I'm, I'm on telling you the story, we've been pushed to our limits. But we're still forced to carry on. Good afternoon, Mackie. Oh, good afternoon. I just finished on getting these cars for Colton. I'm going to take them up to Owen and then back down to here to, um, to receive more orders. Sounds productive. Yeah, I just hope it's productive enough to to um keep those um you know those um anti K and M um Cadenville engines away. Well, Mackie, it isn't your fault. It's just one big misunderstanding. What's a misunderstanding? Well, here's an example of a misunderstanding. Your design. Hey, boy, Craig, that was a good one. Jeez, for one minute it seems like the BNSF was our friend, and now they turned against us. Well, we still have the Union Pacific. Maki, what did I tell you? Never trust a railroad that crosses more than four states. Correct. Maki, it's 3.15, we gotta get going. Well, I'll see you guys later. Proceed with caution. Mackie, we're supposed to stop you. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wonder how long we're going to be waiting here. Oh, quite you. It's not going to be that long. Gee, for once you were right. Just be quiet and wait. Oh no, it's a Cadenville engine. Dag it, it's one of them k and folk. Remember, Mackie, just act normal. Okay, Mackie, we're in the clear. Excellent. 
But at this rate, we'll have at least 18 minutes to spare with that final load to Junction City. Okay, Mackie, the final load of the day. Just need to pick it up and take it back to Junction City. Okay, heading back to Junction City now. Let's just hope no boulders smash us on the way. <laughs> you know, these are one of the times I wish you were one of those hoppers that were crushed. Oh, quit your complaining, Mackie. So next, Scout, Colton, and Craig decided to come down to the, to the site so they can probably fix it. We first tried ramming it with some, we first tried ramming it with some hoppers, but that didn't work. Um, Grant? What? Didn't you just, didn't you just notice that, that Mackie just came in? Oh yeah, um, good evening Mackie. Good evening, good evening Grant. How are the railroads treating you? Terrible. I can't even go a day without seeing like five of those Caterville engines. Well, Mackie, I personally forgive them for all that. What? What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter if we're from different railroads. Why not? Well, you see, Mackie, we all need to we all need to help each other through the through these trying times. And most of the engines off the Cadenville are might be jerks, but some of them are um, are accepting and um, forgiving, just like me. Since when was it a hard time for you? Because every day it seems like it seems more and more like Poon is going to hit that big red button. But anyways, just say something nice the next time you you come across one of them. Uh, okay. Now let's go to sleep, Maggie. We have an all too long day tomorrow. Finally, I can get back to Junction City for my afternoon break. And I can get myself some Dunkin' Donuts. Nobody cares about what you want. Okay, who's the one that gets up at 6.45 in the morning to get you fired up? The fire lighter? Oh, I just can't stand you. Hey, what's that up ahead? I don't know, we, but we better check it out. It doesn't look good. After my buddy, what happened? My safety valve burst and we had to, and we had to stop here. But if you have to do that, the rest of you is working just fine. It's called a safety valve for a reason. Now can you please tow me back to Junction City so I can get it replaced? Oh yeah, um, sure. Anything for my best friend. finally made it. Thank you, Eric. You're a good friend. I know, Rafter. Eric! Ah! Oh, it's just you, Tremor. What brings you out of the yard? At 2.30 in the afternoon. I need you to pull a, a train of supplies over to Greenwood. Mr. K requested it himself. But sir, that's Cadenville territory. It's forbidden. You're scheduled to leave at 3 a.m. That's early morning, so nobody should be should be able to see you. Uh, okay. Okay, so it's a deal. 
At least I can rest for the rest of the day. Okay now, Caboose Crew, check. A warm fire, check. Eric being tired, check. Eric, we're only going 80 miles west. It's 3.15, so... No, he said 3 a.m. Oh yeah, it's uh, 3 a.m. I should really fix this watch. Let's get a move on, shall we? Ah, <sighs> fine. Driver, how much longer until we reach Greenwood? It's only about 18 miles left. Where are we now? I think we're in Skipton. Oh no, here comes a station. Eric, keep your lights on. It's dangerous to run without them at night. Yeah, right. Okay. Wow, I win. Now, was that really that hard, Eric? Yes, it was. Well, it may be even harder on you to, to, um, to, to find out that we have another trainer, Rustin. Wait, quiet. Do you hear that? Yeah, and what about it? That's a cave village. We need to get out now. Come on, let's go. Eric, chill out! Uh, hello? Ah! Look, 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 look here. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to come here. Just please don't tell anyone out here! Hey, calm down, partner, don't worry. Hey, you sound, you sound just like me. My name's Alan, and unlike everyone, I, and unlike everybody else, I'm not a snitch. So you're not going to rent me out to everyone else? Of course not. Speaking of which, aren't you a K and N engine? Uh, yeah. Why? I used to work there. Why did you leave? Because I blackmailed one of your engines and I got sent away. So, uh, are we cool now? Yeah, we are. Well, I have another train to take back to back to um, Ruskin. Okay, don't be late. I hope I see you again, Alan. You too, whatever your name was. Hmm. Um. Uh, Ian? Ian? What is it, Richard? Why does it smell like cigarettes in the air? It's my fireman. He can't get enough of them. Well, if we keep on, he gonna end, he's gonna end up with lung cancer. Richard, what was that? that? That's something called a whistle. That doesn't sound like one of our engines. Well, I can hear him or her coming closer. Hey, look at that. It's a cannon engine. He's on our territory. Let's rip his smoke box in half. Oh, he already left the yard. Oh, whatever, we'll get back at him. Yeah. Yes. Finally. I made it. Are you happy now? Yes, I'm very, very happy. Hello there. Uh, who are you? I'm a Cadenville engine, of course. But why are you here? This is our territory. Oh, so that's how it is, huh? You can go on our territory, but we can't go on yours? What do you mean by that? We saw you! What do you mean by that? That wasn't me. We don't have a, a steam engine as big as you on the Cadenville. 
Okay, fine. I I went on your room last night, but I didn't mean to. Okay, well I need to go pull the um, the um, green with Zephyr. Also, I'm telling on you. Wait, no! Eric, just let him. Besides, what's going to happen if he does tell him? Well, as it turned out, a lot could happen. When Richard got back to Caden, though, he told everybody about about how Eric was on was on their railroad. And Alan and Scout were forced to sit there and listen. Soon, Eric became a big target for bullying. Insults started to get thrown at him constantly, then they just you know, wouldn't stop. Just like bullies in real life. Wait, did I say real life? I, I meant the bullies in your school. I don't think he, he got the press or espresso though. And you know, cripple like a leaf under your foot. He got mad. Really mad. So mad, in fact, that he went down the street line to tell to personally tell Trainboy to not send him over to the Canaanville again. But he got stuck and derailed in the process. For this, he was given two days in Junction City Roundhouse. But during his time in there, he learned not to get mad, get even. This mentality was on show after, after the following chain of events. Hello there, Alan. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine, Richard. I, um, I'll just stop by here so I can let Ian pass by. Okay, well, I'm sitting here with the, um, with the, um, limited. Oh, so I have to man on the tail or something. Will you stop messing with them, with that Eric fella? Oh, that guy? Heck no. A cannon and a band abandoned us when we needed their help the most. So I couldn't care less about how they feel. Now listen here, partner. I used to work over there myself until, um, some stuff happened and, uh, the point here is that it's not all about you. It is. Why? Because I'm the biggest. Well, yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. Well, it looks like, well, it looks like I'll be departing now. I'll see, I'll see you again when you, when you stop worrying about our competition. Hey, well, he was only trying to help, um, trying, trying to deliver supplies to our railroad. And he's probably already too far away to hear me. Darn it. Okay, Richard, we're finally here. How do you feel? Well, my smoke box feels kind of stuffy, but I but I bet we can uh, make it back. Now that's the spirit. Nice, now let's turn around, shall we? Okay, Richard, we're clear for departure. Oh, that's great, let's go. I'm driving, I don't feel so well. Yeah, I see why your your steam chest is overflowing and this throttle won't budge. Is that a bad thing? Yes, it is. Somebody do something. Guys, we aren't getting out of here without a tow. What? I said we aren't getting back to Greenwood without a tow. You know, an engine that pulls us along. But... Uh, <sighs> Just find some, just find some help. Okay, I'm going to contact Train Boy. So you see, Train Boy, we're going to have to somehow sabotage the BMS, the BMSF loads. Ah, but there's just one problem with that. How are we supposed to get the work orders from every single engine? Yes, I'll send over 2495 now. Uh, what was that? Sorry, Leroy, but I got a dash. The Cadenville Limited needs me. Goodbye. What? 
in the world. Some people are born with a spoon in hand. Lord, let them help themselves. Eric, Eric! I'm so glad I found you, Eric. Anyways, um, there was an emer there's an emergency with the um with the Cadenville Limited. Well, not re well, not really an emergency, but um, Richard is kind of you know unusable right now. After all the things he did to me, heck no! I could just sit out there and be the stuck-up so and so he is. Come on, Eric, don't be like this. Oh, fine. Now that's a good engine there. Yeah, yeah. Just let me start my 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 amazing rescue mission. Oh no, it's this guy. Hey, I'm only here to help. Well, I guess I do need your help. Thank you for finally agreeing with me. So we're supposed to be in Greenwood by 5.30, right? Yes, and I think we should get going if we want to be on time. Okay. Uh, Eric, it's time to stop. Yeah, I know. So, how did that feel? It felt devilish devilishly good. Hey, uh, what about me? I bet somebody's gonna take you into that roundhouse and uh, fix you up. You're welcome. Oh, hey, Eric. How you doing? Better than all right, actually. Why is that? Is it because you ha had to tow ri Richard all the way here? What? How did you know that? I saw you come in the yard. That's a tension for being such a jerk. Well, it's not all his fault. Wh what do you mean? You see, we fight... We, the k and as a railroad, failed to supply you, failed to supply you guys in your time of need. And that's why you're mad at us. I ain't mad at you. I understand your situation just fine. So, are we friends now? Yep, just about. Well, I'm gonna head over to the sheds and, you know, talk, uh, talk a little bit to Richard. Um, okay. Goodbye. See you later, Loco Gator. Good evening, numb out of the Midwest. <laughs> okay, Richard, you're just going to be in here for a few days. And then you'll be running on the main line again. Howdy, Richard. Oh, 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 it's just you. Look, Richard, I, I came to say I'm sorry. Oh, yeah? For what? I'm sorry for that derailment I skipped in all those years ago. Well, hey, I've came to realize that it wasn't your fault. 
That was my fireman's fault. But hey, that was that was the summer 2008. It's autumn 2022. So move on, will ya? And I'm sorry for making for um you know being rude to your kind and your railroad. And finally, I would like to say that I'm sorry for spreading all these rumors about ya. I hope we can become friends now. No, not not friends. Frenemies. Anyways, I got a dash. I need to be um, heading back to Junction City. Goodbye. Happy travels. As soon as Eric pulled out of that shed, the, the true friendship of the K&G and the K&M was sealed forever. Within a few days' time, me, Mikey, and Craig um, did, didn't see that much competitiveness between the two anymore. The reason why being because Trainboy and Mr. K signed a contract stating that in the hardest of times, we shall help each other through, through those hard times. And that meant not, not absorbing each other's freight customers into their own railroads. And that meant less stress on me, Mikey, and Craig. And that made the weeks where me, where the three of us um, were working at Gentech Quarry a lot more bearable. Now, lads, you're probably wondering what did Eric do to Richard that made him so cross with him? Well, as it turned out, in the summer, of, in June of 2008, Eric and Richard were double heading in a coal train to, um, to, to Greenwood. And they had to stop to let a local from the grain elevator pass by. Finally, it it got out of the um out of the yard with a painfully low speed. Suddenly, Eric jolted forward and sent Richard into the train, or at least that's what he thought had happened. So actually, you see, Eric, no, Richard's fireman at at the time was new. Seeing the trains were a little too close to each other for comfort. So he tried to back their train up a little bit, but in reality, he actually pulled the accelerator, causing what I would say was a very minor accident compared to some of the accidents I've seen. After the after the following re revelations, wait, I'm sorry, the revelations you have just seen, Eric and Richard became became the best of friends. Oh, why do you keep messing that up? The best of frenemies. So, Eric, what do you have? Oh, well, I got a cold drag to Owen. What about you? I got a, I got a grain train to, um, to Costco. I heard they like wheat bread over there. <laughs> no wonder. Now, I better be heading off now if I don't want to be late. Oh, okay. Goodbye, Eric. Goodbye, Richard. You see, guys, the battle might be over, but the war still rages on. But we don't think that this war will last forever. But that's our opinion. What's yours?